from a construction mistake that gave rise to one of the most iconic landmarks in the entire world to a tragic building collapse in China. Here are five construction projects that didn't go as planned. We start with number five, Lotus Riverside Complex. China is a country that is known for its insanely fast, efficient, and record-breaking construction projects. As the most populous country in the entire world, it has to keep up with the ever-growing demand for housing and infrastructure. In fact, just in 2021 alone, China managed to build more than 6 million residential properties, making its construction and real estate industries by far the world's largest and most developed. However, exactly because of its sheer size and magnitude, coupled with tight schedules and profit margins, China's construction industry is also known for sacrificing quality in exchange for quick returns of investment. And sometimes, these sacrifices prove to be expensive and catastrophic. One incident that eventually proved to be a wake-up call was the collapse of an entire apartment building at the Lotus Riverside Complex located in Shanghai. On the morning of June 27, 2009, the city of Shanghai was greeted by the loud rumbling noise of a 13-story apartment block tumbling to the ground. Almost completely intact, the newly constructed building collapsed on its side, narrowly avoiding its neighboring buildings. One worker who happened to be inside the building to collect his tools during the collapse was unfortunately killed as a result of the incident. Initial investigations of the incident point towards an ongoing excavation for an underground garage in the building that might have caused the structure to tip over. According to the report, the building's foundations were undermined because of the excavation. As a result, the dugout soil caused the adjacent riverbank to collapse, allowing water to mix with the ground. Eventually, the soil muddied and loosened, ultimately leading to the building's collapse. More than just the uprooted foundations, the investigation also revealed a glaring problem within the industry. The company behind the project apparently had already been warned of the potential dangers before the incident. A representative of the supervising company even told reporters that they have constantly been ignored by the construction firm after repeated warnings about the loose soil. It was later revealed that the supervising company was apparently hired by the construction firm themselves to oversee the project. Any and all problems that would be raised would go directly to the construction firm, the same entity that employs them in the first place. Because of the conflict of interest, the construction company had the power to postpone or reduce the supervising company's fee if they were to report problems to the local authority's quality control department. Following the building's collapse, nine key individuals from Shanghai Zhongxin Construction were detained for further investigation. Additionally, a large chunk of the people who had already bought properties from the developer soon demanded refunds or compensation following the incident. Number 4. The Intempo Skyscraper With a height of more than 200 meters and consisting of 47 floors, the Intempo Skyscraper, located in Benidorm, Spain, is the tallest residential building in the European Union. Following a 92 million euro loan from Spanish savings bank Caixa Galicia, construction on the skyscraper began back in 2006. At the time, the project was expected to take only three years to complete. But just nearly a year after work on the project started, the global financial crisis of 2008 severely hindered the development. All construction work was suddenly put to a stop as the construction company responsible for the project went bankrupt. The skyscraper received massive media attention when a rumor was spread that no elevators were planned for the construction. A Spanish newspaper published the story, after which it was quickly spread by other media. But as it turned out, this was a false claim, to which the sales manager, Rafael Ballesta, responded, We are constructing the highest residential skyscraper in Europe, so how is it possible to build without elevators? But even if the story isn't true, not everything went as planned in this project. In 2010, construction on Intempo resumed when a new company took over the project. However, workers went on four whole months with no pay, and they threatened to go on strike after all the problems with their salaries. When a lift was installed for the workers to use on site, the elevator crashed while 13 people were inside. But fortunately, the emergency brakes worked, preventing a tragedy, and only two workers were taken to the hospital. Apart from that, Spain's real estate market soon bounced back after the financial crisis, and things were starting to look positive for the construction of Intempo, which was now scheduled to be completed in early 2014. 
However, just one year before the new date, the architects involved in the project suddenly resigned, declining to tell the media their reasons for the decision. Just a year later, the project's owner filed for bankruptcy, leading to speculations of the architects leaving because of financial problems with the development. Intempo was once again left languishing for the next few years. Finally, in 2017, a Connecticut-based company called SVP Global took charge of the project and completely turned it around. After an investment of 60 million euros, the company was able to complete the project and even managed to overcome the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. 15 years after construction on the Intempo first began, and after going through many different owners and financial problems, the skyscraper finally opened its doors in 2021. Number 3. Berlin Aquadam Located inside the Radisson Collection Hotel at the heart of the German capital, the Aquadam was inside the world's largest cylindrical aquarium at 25 meters tall and containing a volume of 1 million liters of water. The Aquadam was the centerpiece of the hotel and featured more than 1,500 individual tropical fish across 100 different species. The aquarium even had a transparent elevator shaft that went through the middle for hotel guests to get up close to the swimming fish. Being such a massive aquarium in the middle of a hotel, the attraction had to be regularly maintained and cleaned to ensure not just the safety of the fish, but also that of the hotel guests and onlookers. However, in the morning of the 16th of December 2022, the entire aquarium suddenly burst and released a million liters of seawater into the hotel lobby and eventually onto the streets outside. This sudden outburst of water devastated the hotel's interior and even managed to completely destroy the building's entrance. In fact, the sudden rush of water was powerful enough that local seismographs managed to detect the shock waves created by the aquarium's collapse. Thankfully, the incident happened early in the morning when there were only a few people in the area. Only two people were injured and subsequently hospitalized because of the aquarium's collapse. Had it been during peak hours, the collapse would have likely proved fatal, according to authorities. Investigations on the incident's probable cause point to material fatigue as the most likely reason for the aquarium's collapse. According to experts, the large temperature difference between the warm water inside the aquarium and the cold air outside, which was reportedly below freezing on the night before the incident, might have caused the acrylic panels of the aquarium to weaken and eventually break. Perhaps a little unexpected, number two is the Tower of Pisa. As a UNESCO World Heritage Site and with more than 6 million people visiting each year, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is one of Italy's most relevant monuments. And yet, Italy's most widely recognized is actually a result of a construction flaw. The tower was constructed way back in the 13th century and served as a freestanding bell tower of the Pisa Cathedral. The tower's iconic four-degree tilt can be traced back from the very beginning of its construction, beginning in 1173. The tower began to sink into the ground on its side when the second floor was being constructed. As the tower was built on top of loose and unstable subsoil, and because of only a three-meter deep foundation, the tower slowly started to lean, and the ground could not support the weight of the structure. So how exactly did the tower manage to survive all these years? Why is it not collapsing and just remaining in this position? According to one source, the tower only managed to survive at the time of the construction because construction was halted for a long time as the Republic of Genoa was preoccupied in conflicts with its neighboring countries. Because of this pause in construction, the underlying soil had enough time to settle and harden over the years. Over the next few decades, the tower's tilt gradually worsened as the structure was finally completed almost 200 years after construction started. By the 1990s, the four-degree tilt had grown to as much as five and a half degrees, and the Italian government started to worry that the historic tower might collapse. After the abrupt collapse of another tower in the town of Pavia in 1989, the tower was soon closed to the public, and efforts were made for its stabilization. The bells were removed from the top of the tower to reduce weight, while cables and lead counterweights were installed to reduce the structure's tilt. So by the turn of the 21st century, the tower's tilt had been reduced back to just under 4 degrees. Today, the Leaning Tower of Pisa remains as one of the most visited monuments in Italy, precisely because of a construction mistake made more than 800 years ago that gave it its iconic tilt. Sometimes, mistakes can actually turn out to be a good thing, after all. And finally, number one, Sampung Department Store. 
In the late 1980s, the South Korean capital of Seoul experienced a huge construction and development boom. Millions of dollars in investments poured into the city as it was declared to be the host of the 1988 Summer Olympics. As a result, nearly all of the buildings built in Seoul during this period were created by construction companies who were looking to finish their projects as quickly as possible, by any means. One such building that was created during this period was a Sampoon department store, a nine-story shopping mall built in one of Seoul's most busy and highly commercialized districts. The original plan for the development was to create an apartment building, but this was soon scrapped by the future chairman of the Sampoon Group's construction division, Lee Jun. Because of this sudden change, a number of vital support columns were removed in the blueprints to give way for the construction of escalators and an additional floor. The construction company that was supposed to work on the project raised their concerns regarding this change, but instead of listening to their pleas, Lee Jun instead fired the construction company and replaced them with his own. The department store was quickly completed just two years later and attracted an estimated 40,000 people each day, making it at the time one of the most successful commercial establishments in the area. By 1995, cracks had started to appear in the building's top floor, but Lee Jun only ordered his staff to relocate stores and merchandise to the basement and thought nothing more of the earliest signs of danger. On the morning of June 29, 1995, the cracks had grown significantly to the point that management had to close the entire fifth floor from the public. Later during that day, engineers were even sent to check on the problem, and they determined that the entire structure was at risk of a catastrophic collapse. An emergency board meeting was held, and the store's directors even suggested that all staff and customers were to be evacuated. But despite these warnings, Lee Jun still refused to evacuate the building in fear of losing potential revenue for the day. Shortly after the meeting, it was reported that Lee Jun himself left the building before the incident. At exactly 5.52 p.m., the store started to produce cracking sounds, which prompted workers to immediately evacuate all customers and staff. In a matter of seconds, the store's roof gave way, crashing down onto the lower floors. All of the support columns in the entire south wing soon collapsed, trapping more than 1,500 people in the ensuing rubble. In its aftermath, the incident took the lives of 502 people in what is considered the largest peacetime disaster in South Korean history. Soon after the collapse, Lee Jun, along with his own son and other key people in his company, were found guilty of negligence and received a sentence of more than 10 years of imprisonment. The event also led to a comprehensive review of the country's construction safety laws and regulations and revealed a deeply rooted corruption. High-ranking city officials were found to have taken bribes from Lee Jun himself during the store's construction. They were later also sentenced to 10 years in prison. Today, in a controversial move by the local government of Seoul, the site of the Sampoon department store has been sold off to a private developer, and a luxury apartment complex now sits on top of the tragic site. A memorial was soon built elsewhere to remember the incident. Do you know other similar construction mistakes like these? Which projects do you want us to cover next? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.